Dana, uh, you have like so many achievements to your credit, but you are also a very strong grandmaster, woman grandmaster. And I went through playing some of Playing rarely your... though, but... <laughs> yes, right now you're playing rarely, but what I saw is that you have beaten so many strong players, like so many grandmasters. Yeah, because I, I have a strong school since my childhood. I mean, uh, I've been working on chess quite... Uh, a lot like when i was a kid i was uh, uh, going to my chess classes six days per week working like five hours per day i loved it very much so the base is there it's just that i have uh, not chosen uh, the uh, professional chess path in my life and i do a lot of many other things but uh, when i do have time then I normally have a great appetite for chess, yes. <laughs> I mean, and that resembles on the board as well. <laughs> and I could I could see some of the games, they were tremendous. I want to take a look at one of your most famous victories, uh, because, but it's not the only one. Uh, I want to start off with your win against Ho Yifan. Ho Yifan. Oh, mm -hmm. What memories uh, come to your mind when... when uh, about the talk, game? Yeah, about that general? game. You know, somehow I had a feeling that I would uh, be winning the game already before it. How? I don't know. Sometimes you have this feeling in the gut uh, when when you go to your round. No, not when you face someone who's four hundred points stronger. Sometimes you have the even if you play against somebody who is weaker against you. Sometimes you feel that um, it's not your day. You're gonna lose even if you try hard. You know. I don't know. Probably I'm the only one <laughs> who has this. You know, uh, feelings before before the games. But but that day I somehow woke up and I was so fresh and so self confident that I really thought that okay. That's gonna be my day. <laughs> Amazing, and so that's why that was the day when I put on the Latvian national, you know, uh, uh, not the gown, but our form of the of the team. It's not every day uh, ladies to uh, put on the form. Yes. So you, you just felt that today is going to be the yeah, day. Prepared so... for the win. <laughs> <laughs> so you went prepared. Uh, this was one of the moments where you you found a very nice move. Uh, I thought that Bishop G5 was very powerful. Because in a way you're fighting for the the d6, d6 square. point. Of course, I mean I want to intrude, intrude uh, with my knight on d6, and uh, the piece that is uh, keeping me away that's the black square bishop. So it's the the basic things that uh, the the coach teaches to the little kid. Yeah, we'll try to understand what of the opponent uh, pieces does disturb your plans, and then get rid of them. <laughs> so. But 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 she had a tactical shot in hand. Yeah, mm -hmm. because your bishop was yes, hanging, yes, yes. Uh, and then you won back the pawn. You got the important bishop, and at so some this was actually that was considering, of course, before light and bishop g five, and I felt that this is a very comfortable um, position for for the white pieces. Just of course, important to be very careful not to let the the black uh, knight come into uh, the e three. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I guess then the the black, the black would have uh, quite a strong point to play, but uh, that's why I think it was G4 here. Yes. Mm -hmm. G4 is the prophylactic, but at the same time, yeah, you want no, to make it. as well. Of course, it's, it's to... dual use. It's <laughs> preventive, uh, uh, not allowing uh, the black knight to to invade my position, um, my fortress, yes, but at the same time, it's, it bears already the advancement uh, uh, and attack on the king's side. Yeah, and then you slowly build up. The attack here, uh, Bishop H3 was a yeah, nice move. F5. And uh, Queen G2, and here you went for the doubling. It's easy for the for black for for the for the white uh, uh, player because I have the space advantage, and uh, yeah. you know it's difficult to understand how to coordinate the pieces of uh, the of black while they are squeezed. Yes, and the weaknesses on E6 and. You know, f5 all the time has to be concerned with the uh, uh, following g5. Quite a nice position to be played, even if it's against the world champion, just champion. True. And then you you got in g5. I also like this next move, very powerful. I I think from your games, what I understood is uh, attack comes very naturally to yeah, you. Yeah, dynamic chess is yeah. mine. Yes, I do. Not, I'm not afraid to to sacrifice uh, exactly. a pawn or a piece, it's not really, I mean, I come from Riga, and the, the magician of Riga, Mikhail Tal, comes from there. I wouldn't say that I'm uh, Tal-like, <laughs> but you know, the dynamic chess is something that is probably in our blood, yes. <laughs> it, it comes it comes naturally to you, but also, uh, like, 
you like end games i think you exchange queens many times and you go into end games as well yeah i'm not afraid of them yeah. yeah. so i mean it's but uh, but but you general, prefer, I prefer to prefer the complicated positions the more complicated it is it is the, the somehow more comfortable i feel <laughs> and, and you finished off the same really like in the in in the real life in politics in other areas you know the the more stress the more you know tension the somehow better oriented i get <laughs> really? yes when it's too calm I, i'm get bored i'm, I'm getting bored <laughs> So King G8, uh, you pushed the pawn, mm -hmm. and then you took here, and take now this strike because E7 is hanging, yes, and yes. you you finished off the game uh, very precisely. The knight came back, mm -hmm. you are exchange up, and you won the game. So very very uh, nice game here. Thank you. Uh, it was very wonderfully played. I have one more game which I wanted to discuss with you, and that was uh, your win against Van Valley. And uh, I think it was a rapid event. Rapid, yes. Uh, when when did this happen? Uh, that's at Pukhajarva in uh, in um, in Estonia. Quite a nice tournament, actually, that is uh, organized every year. And it's a pity that I couldn't attend it uh, this year because of me being here in Dubai, uh, sunbathing. Yes, <laughs> well, in Pukhajarva it's already snowing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, that was our encounter a and few years ago, like six years ago. Yeah, 2015. And mm -hmm. uh, you are a King's Indian player. You like to play aggressive chess, as you said. Mm -hmm. But this was very unique uh, position where you found a very nice move. Because generally in the King's Indian, you want to play on the king side, like like f5 and so on. Yeah, that would be a normal plan. But uh, check is uh, chess is also chess is also a very concrete game, right? So here, I think that I just uh, noticed this nice um, tactical idea mm. yes, with d6. Yeah, this is beautiful. This is the best move as well in the position. Uh, and she can't, maybe he can, if he takes here, the problem is that the rook is hanging, is hanging and yes. uh, the knight as well. So mm -hmm. loses a piece. So d takes and knight takes. The queen takes d6. And you played bishop b7. Just you, you lost a pawn here, but I think the yeah, white the, pieces the, are the, in the pieces trouble. The pieces are hanging on bishop in b, b4, uh, rook on a5, and it's a lot of dynamics. Yeah, in the <laughs> as you said, you like you like uh, a lot of things happening. Yes. So went back and you took on b4, then you took here, and it's quite comfortable for black. Mm. And now, like. Maybe the viewers can pause the video and try to think here. You you found another uh, nice stroke here. <laughs> <laughs> Which is uh, Bishop G2. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I remember on G2, there was another game you played with a GM, I think Kobalia. Mm -hmm. And you played this queen G4 move and he had to resign mm -hmm. in that game. It was also on the G2 square. Mm -hmm. So this one. So the king is always the target, yeah, right? <laughs> So even if you lose some some material, you know, as we say, the checkmate is uh, is older. <laughs> but but who taught you to play this aggressive kind of chess? Did you have a coach who who instilled this? As you said in Riga, I mean, it's the land of Tal, Shiro, all of these yes, yes. great players. But was there a coach? I think it's uh, uh, it's not about coach. It's about your character. I I do be really believe that. Uh, you can see the personality, the character, the features of a person on the board. So I'm such kind of a person. I'm very, you know, sharp <laughs> in the real but life. But how, how did that characteristic mm -hmm. come to you? It's, I guess, it's inborn. <laughs> you cannot choose your character. You can uh, fine tune something, you know, or avoid some, uh, try to, to avoid some of your bad habits. But in general, that's something that the nature god whatever you call it gives gives to you um but uh, but uh, yes i've been working also with uh, Sigurd Slanka and he he has this um, this uh, saying that you have to play a dynamische schach because he he works with a lot of german <laughs> chess players so we always have a joke whenever you sacrifice something else dynamische schach yeah so <laughs> Especially for the ladies, I think that's a smart thing uh, to do, that to, to teach them to be a bit uh, more, more aggressive, aggressive and, and, uh, and not forget that the king is the most important one. I mean, not, not to play like a kamikaze, kamikaze chess, chess yes, but, uh, but uh, 
not to be afraid of really uh, sacrificing material for the initiative, for developing the pieces, trying to, you know, uh, make use of their best qualities. Yes. So that's somehow. That's how that's how you learn mm -hmm. these things. Yeah, this was a another beautiful game, and when and also yeah, the, 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 I think that uh, partly also your opening selection and your repertoire does influence your style. I mean, he felt that uh, uh, King's Indian might be uh, appropriate for me, so I've been playing it a lot, and then you somehow learn some patterns. Uh, in in that opening, if you are afraid. You shouldn't be going there, yes. True, true, absolutely. And uh, one last uh, bit of thing which was very curious is uh, your opening choice. And now after speaking with you a bit, I have understood that you like to play this kind of modern, Tiger's yes. modern. Yes, yes, Tiger's modern. It's because similar to King's Indian, yes, the idea. To create and this. Mm -hmm. and, and this game is a, again a perfect representation of the craziness. This is theory, yeah. Nothing new for now. It's all theory. Yes. yes. <laughs> Take. Now it starts, I guess. The so. real game. And uh, knight h5, f5, e6. And hey, all the pieces uh, work, yeah? So mm. this is such a nice thing, yes, that uh, even though you don't have the material, I mean, you, you have a clear plan. Easy. It is white who have to find yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And try to find the solutions. It's like breathing, breathing. Yes, it's uh, every move like is a, like a breath, <laughs> natural. And kept the queens, and then your pawns kept rolling on mm -hmm. and on. <laughs> Beautiful mm -hmm. game. It's like a movie. Yeah, we are watching it. <laughs> yeah, it's With just the like the pawns yeah, yeah, keep, yeah. <laughs> keep rolling, and it seems like some uh, you know 18th mm -hmm. century game where all the Pawns are just rolling down. Yeah, you you managed to convert this extra mm -hmm. pawn. Uh, you were better. So these were a few of your uh, very nice games that, that I enjoyed uh, seeing them. Uh,